Hey everybody, it's Mr. Ray here, uh, continuing on with our data management course. Uh, we're in Unit 2 now, and we're looking at uh, different uh, ways to calculate probability, different circumstances. In the previous lesson, Lesson 4, we looked at uh, whether two events were independent of each other or one dependent on the other happening. And we used that, um, that relationship when we wanted to find the probability of both of the events happening. Uh, so probability, if we had two events, A and B, and we want to know the probability of A and B, uh, well, that's, that's what we used lesson uh, four uh, to do. So today's lesson, uh, it's called Mutually Exclusive Events. And, uh, well, let's define what that is. Mutually exclusive events are two events that have different attributes and cannot occur at the same time. Uh, whereas non-mutual exclusive is the opposite. Uh, events that have some similar attributes and can occur at the same time. Um, so we'll look at examples of that happening and what the difference is. Uh, but we use this, uh, we're going to use this relationship uh, when we want to find out the probability of one or the other uh, happening. Uh, so if we had two events, A and B, we're looking at the probability of A and B happening. And if the events are mutually exclusive, that is, if they can't happen at the same time, we have this nice formula here. We just add the probability of the first event happening with the probability of the second event happening. Um, now, this actually goes back a bit to uh, our unit one when we were learning how to count things. Um, and we were using Venn diagrams. So the mutual exclusive uh, situation is when you have two events. And remember, we did our Venn diagrams. So if those circles did not overlap, so you had A and B, um, this would be considered mutually exclusive. So there's no attributes that A and B share. There's nothing in common. Uh, they can't happen, at, uh, can't happen at the same time because they don't share anything together, okay? Um, whereas the non-mutually exclusive, if you did a Venn diagram for that situation, this is where you do have the overlap. So this would be your A, B as before, but the center part here where they overlap, that would be considered uh, A and B. So that, that area there would be, um, the thing they have in common between A and B. Now, when we looked at Venn diagrams in unit one, all we really did back then was count how many things are in each each of these things, uh, A and B. Um, now, the difference now is uh, what's contained inside the um, what's contained inside the circles here. We're actually going to be calculating probabilities, so. Um, all, the only real difference is if you had a number, um, say the number of uh, uh, the the number inside A was five, and the number inside B was ten. Um, so the probability uh, we count up the total amount of things. Five plus ten is fifteen. So the probability of A happening would be five over fifteen. Probability of B happening is ten over fifteen. Those can be reduced. Um, so that's that's where these probabilities come from. It's just the number of times that thing happens divided by the total number of uh, situations inside the whole uh, Venn diagram here. Okay. Now you can see uh, we call this the addition rule because we're adding probabilities, but it's when we're using trying to calculate the probability of A or B happening. Um, so like I said before, when it's mutually exclusive, we just add up the probabilities of both. And that makes sense because there's nothing to worry about that's gonna interfere with that. Um, whereas if it's uh, non-mutually exclusive, if we were to just add the probabilities of A and B, we'd be double counting some of the things that they both have in common. So what we have to do for the probability is make that correction where we actually take out the probability of that intersection happening. Um, so that's why this formula is different. So when you have a situation, uh, you know, you're going to go through the regular, define your events, uh, 
uh, find the probability of each event, and then ask yourself, is it possible for both of these things to happen at the same time? If it is, then that's considered uh, non-mutual exclusive. So you would use this formula where you're subtracting or correcting the intersection probability. And, or if the two things can't, two events can't happen at the same time, we just use this more simple version for mutually exclusive. Okay, so uh, I've just repeated the formulas here. So let's do some examples to see how this works. Um, now, uh, for each example, I actually, you know, spill the beans at the beginning. I, it says right in the example what type of event it has. I'm only doing that so that you can see which examples apply to which situation. Um, but when you get a question like this on, a, on an assessment, obviously you're not going to be told which one it is. You have to kind of uh, decide that for yourself. So we'll pretend we didn't see that um, when we do this. So um, Terry attends a fundraiser at which 15 t-shirts are being given away as door prizes. Door prize winners are randomly given a shirt from a stock of two black shirts, four blue shirts, and nine white shirts. Terry really likes the black and blue shirts, but is not too keen on the white ones. Assuming that Terry wins the first door prize, what's the probability that she will get a shirt that she liked? Okay, now, what does that mean, getting a shirt she liked? Well, she likes the black shirts and the blue shirts. So we're basically wanting to find out what's the probability that she gets a black or a blue shirt. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is define our events. So this has to tie back to what the question is asking. So A, we're going to make uh, the event that Terry wins a black shirt. Okay, that's one of the ones that she wants. And then the other one we'll call event B, uh, Terry wins a blue shirt. Now, you can make these, I've said this several lessons in a row now, you can make these event variables, or the event names A and B. You can make them any capital letter you want. Um, sometimes uh, it makes sense to make it more uh, applicable to this to what that event is. Now, in this case, black and blue both start with B, so we'll just keep it as A and B. Okay, so th the next thing we do is calculate the probability of each of these things happening. So we're going to have to go back and determine... Uh, what that prob what those probabilities are. So, uh, so the probability of winning a black shirt is the number of black shirts divided by the total number of shirts that are being offered. So the black shirts, we had two of those. Uh, we had two plus four plus nine, that's 15. So two black shirts out of the 15 shirts is the probability. The probability she wins a blue shirt, which is probability of event B happening, this time it's 4 over 15. Okay, so we've got, we go, we've got our two events, what they are, what their probabilities are. Now we ask the question, can these two things happen simultaneously? Can she win a black shirt and a blue shirt as the first prize? And the answer is no, she can't because there's only one shirt being given away and it's either black or blue, it can't be both. Okay, so in, in this case, we know that this is, if I go back to the Venn diagram, um, it's a situation where it's, they're mutual exclusive. So I'm going to just plug in the formula for, we want to know the probability of A or B. And we know since it's mutually exclusive that we're just going to add the two probabilities of probability of A plus probability of B. And I'll just put here since a and B are mutually exclusive. Okay, so now it's just a matter of fill in the appropriate information. We have two fifths for probability of A plus four fifths, sorry, two fifteenths plus four fifteenths. That's equal to six fifteenths, which I can reduce that to three fifths, which is, sorry, two fifths which is 0 0.4. So, and again, the, the, the way you leave your probability 
It can be either a fraction that's been reduced as fully as it can, uh, or a decimal, or a prop, or a percentage. And I like giving percentage as the final version, so that's what I'll do in the in the word answer. Therefore, the probability. Sorry, I guess you can't see what I was doing there. Uh, therefore, the probability uh, that she gets a shirt she likes, which is black or blue, is 40%, which is the same as 0.4. So uh, since I was hiding that from you, let's just go through that again. Uh, so we determined that this was mutually exclusive. She can't have a black and a black, she, she can't win a black and a blue shirt at the same time, because there's only one shirt to be won. So um, we know it's mutually exclusive, so we use this simpler formula with just adding the two probabilities. We do that um, and we get uh, 0.4 or three fifths, sorry, two fifths. And then uh, in the final answer, we, I put uh, 40%. So probably she gets a shirt she likes, it's 40%. Okay, so let's try some more questions. Getting a nice shadow across here. Let me see if I can sort of fix that. Not really, so let's just do that. Okay. All right, For, uh, example two. Uh, and again, I've kind of uh, spilled the beans about what type of event this is, but let's figure that out for ourselves. A card is selected randomly from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability that either a heart or a face card, Jack, Queen, King, is selected? Okay. So our what our goal is, is the probability that the card chosen was um, either a heart or a face card. So we can start off by saying, uh, defining our events. And the events are related to what's going on here. So event A would be that um, a heart is selected as the card. And the second event would be a face card is selected. Okay. Um, Now, um, I guess we could do the probabilities of these first. So probability of uh, probability of A happening. So, um, you know, hearts is one of the four suits. So uh, 13 of the 52 cards are uh, hearts, uh, which could be reduced to one over four. Um, I'm going to leave it as 13 over 52, just from experience, because I... I have a feeling that the next probability will be over 52 and most likely won't be able to reduce to something over four. So I'll leave it like this. If it's, you know, if I need to reduce it later, I can. Okay, and the probability of a face card. So you know that for each suit, there's a Jack, Queen, King. So there's four suits, three cards for each suit. So we know uh, the probability of B is 12 over 52. Okay, now we have to determine, is this, ex is this mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive? So if I did a quick little Venn diagram here, to see what's going on here. Um, so we ask ourselves, can both of these things happen at the same time? Can you select a heart and a face card as your one card? And the answer is yes, because uh, there's three face cards that are hearts. Jack, Queen, King of Hearts. So there's actually this intersection where three of the cards are both of these things. Um, so if I kind of work backwards, uh, the remainder that would go in here that's not part of the intersection, for A that would be 10, and for B that would be nine. So this is A and this is B. There's my box. So that's uh, that tells you, I mean, we sort, sort of deduced it before we drew this Venn diagram, but, but we know that this is non-mutually exclusive. So based on that conclusion, uh, we're going to write our 
probability of A or B as the, as the slightly more complicated version because we don't want to double count those three cards. So that's going to be probability of A um, plus the probability of B and minus the probability of A and B. And this is because we're doing this formula because it's non-mutually exclusive. You don't have to put this every time. I'm just showing you the reason why we're using this formula. Okay. Um, now we've got we've already got probability of A and B. So probability of A is 13 over 52 plus probability B is 12 over 52. You notice these numbers are different than here. These were just the count of the cards. If I was to do the Venn diagram with the probabilities, each of these numbers would be over 52. Okay, um, and then the probability of both of them happening, that's the th 3 out of 52. So we have to subtract that because we've actually counted it twice. So uh, you can see now why I left the fractions as over 52 because well, with the deck of cards, all the probabilities are going to be over 52 most of the time. Um, so if I if I combine these in one step, 13 plus 12 is 25. 25 minus 3 is 22. So I can reduce that to 11 over 26. or as a decimal, 423, 0.423. So that tells us that, uh, that that's the probability of choosing a heart or a face card. So I'll just wrap that up with a word conclusion. Um, therefore, there's a 42.3% chance or a face card. Okay, uh, you notice I used the word chance. Well, chance and probability are pretty much the same. Um, so I would accept either one when you're doing your conclusion. Okay, um, so let's move on to the next example. This is a role-playing game uh, example. So we've got this chart here. Um, so this chart it has, for a certain game, role-playing game, it's got eight um, tokens, playing tokens, dragon, hawk, knight, lion, princess, witch, wizard, and unicorn. And for each of those, it's got some of their characteristics for that given token. So for example, a dragon has uh, animal, supernatural, and it, it can fly. Those are the characteristics where a knight is just a human. Okay. So our question is, if uh, one of the players, Jozo, is randomly assigned a playing token, what's the probability that it will, will either be an animal or a supernatural creature? So you can see those characteristics here. Okay. Now, um, so let's, let's set this question up. So again, the first thing we do is define our two events. So event A will be, he picks an animal. And event B will be, picks a supernatural creature. Okay, so what we can do, and it's nice to have this chart because I can pretty quickly calculate the probability of each of these things happening. So if I go across, so prob A is picks an animal. So if I go across here, well, how many tokens have that animal characteristic? One, two, three, four, and that's out of the eight tokens. So four out of eight. Again, I'll leave it as over eight for now. Um, also, what's the probability that's a supernatural creature? So we count across here, one, two, three, four. So four eights again. Okay, so now we ask ourselves, can both of these events happen at the same time? Can somebody pick a token? Can Jozo pick a token that has an animal and supernatural creature characteristics? And 
well, we could you could actually uh, come along here and see that we have a couple situations, couple tokens actually have both characteristics. So because of that, because we've identified that, we we now know that this is um, non mutually exclusive. So I can then I can then go back to my probability formula here. Probability A or B is equal to probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And that's because it's uh, non mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, so then we're going to need the probability that it is both of them. So I can do that over here, probability of A and B. So we've already identified that there are two tokens that have both of these characteristics. So that's two tokens out of eight. So no, we can now have, we now have all three probabilities we need. So we plug those in here. We get four eights plus four eights minus two eights. So 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 minus 2 is 6, so that's 6 eighths or 3 quarters or 0.75. So we can now answer the question. Therefore, Jozo has a 75% chance of picking an animal or supernatural creature. Okay, so hopefully this is making uh, some sense how we do this. We can basically define our events, uh, determine each event's own probability, and then ask, then ask, can these two things happen at once? If it's yes, then we have uh, non mutually exclusive like this situation, or if they can't happen at the same time, um, then we use the mutually exclusive where we don't have to subtract the intersection. So let's do two more examples. So example four, uh, in a room with 30 students, 10 play basketball and 15 play volleyball. If seven students play both sports, What's the probability that a student plays basketball or volleyball? So uh, again, we want to know, you know, the events are going to be the student plays basketball and the second event, the student plays volleyball. So this time I'm going to be a little more creative. So I'm going to make event B uh, is the student plays basketball. And V will be the student plays volleyball. Okay, uh, so let's do the probability of each of these. Probability student plays basketball, which is B. Uh, so we're, we have a total of 30 students and 10 of those play uh, basketball. So 10 over 30. And again, I could reduce this now. I'm just gonna leave it as it is because I know I'm gonna have to be adding some of these probabilities. And the probability they play volleyball, there are 15 that play volleyball. Now, the fact that they've told us right up front, if, stu if seven students play both sports, well, that tells us right there this is non-mutually exclusive because you can have a student where both of these apply to. Both of these events can happen with the same student or at the same time. So... Um, Right away, I'm just going to put that probability, probably a B and V, that the student plays both sports. Uh, there's seven students out of 30 where that applies, so that's the probability. So if I want to know the probability of student playing basketball or volleyball, so events B or V, I'm going to add probability of B and probability of V and subtract the probability that they both happen together. Okay, and that's, I'm not going to write it this time, but we're using this formula because we know that this is non-mutually exclusive. 
because both events can happen with the same player or at the same time. So let's plug in our probabilities. We've got uh, 10 out of 30 plus 15 out of 30 and we subtract our intersection minus 7 over 30. So that gives us 25 25 minus 18 is sorry 25 minus 7 is 18 which is 0.6. So making my conclusion therefore there is a 60% probability of choosing a basketball or a volleyball player. And don't forget, we're taking that, um, we're choosing the from the 30 students. Not just the athletes, the, not just these players. This is out of the whole class. Okay, so hoping that makes sense. Um, so last example here. This one's a little bit complicated in, in the, the, the wording. Um, so I'll read it and then we'll discuss. Uh, an electronics manufacturer is testing a new product to see whether it requires a surge protector. The tests show that a voltage spike has a 0.2% probability of damaging the product's power supply, a 0.6 probability of damaging downstream components, that's other parts of the uh, the product like circuit board or anything else past the power supply, and a 0.1 probability of damaging both the power supply and the other components. Determine the probability that a voltage spike will damage the product. Okay. So what this is, is if you have a, anything that's an electronic product, if you, if you apply a voltage spike to it, like you increase the amount of current it really wants or the voltage that it really wants, it can damage components. So they've determined that uh, the probability of it, this voltage spike damaging the power supply, the probability that it damaged something else further along, and also the probability that it damages both. So all three of those are given. So if I define my events, this part's a little more difficult for this question just because it's a little complicated. So you can usually get that from the, the question or just before the question. Um, so we're learning that the voltage spike can damage the power supply. The voltage spike can damage uh, other components downstream. And then the, then the probability that it, the, the spike will damage both of those things. So we're going to say that A is damage to this power supply. That's the event. And the second event B would be damage to other components. Okay, so the damage to the power supply, they've told us that right here, the 0.2% probability of damaging the product's power supply. So probability of A, now you have to be careful, this is percentage, remember, so it's not 0 0.2, it's actually 0 0.002. I forget my equal sign there. And the probability of event B happening, that uh, we get damage to other components, that was 0.6%. So 0 0.006. And they've also told us it's possible that the damage happens to both. So probability of A and B happening, that was the 0.1%, so 0 0.001. Now the fact that they've told us that, and we've written this, that tells us automatically these are non-mutual exclusive events. They can actually happen together at the same time. And they told us that right in the question. So, so we're going to use our obviously uh, our non mutually exclusive formula. So probably of A or B, which means probably there's damage to the product, because and that damage can come from damage to the power supply, 
or damage to other parts. So probability of A or B means probability that the product is damaged. Doesn't matter from where. Okay, that's equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of both of them happening to remove the double count. So these are already in decimals, so nice and easy to combine these. 0 0.02 plus 0 0.006 minus 0 0.001, and that's equal to 0 0.007. 8 minus 1. Um, so therefore, there is a... Now, if I want to put this in percent, I've got to be a little careful. Move the decimal 2 to the right, so that becomes 0 0.7%. 0.7% chance uh, the, the product is damaged during a voltage strike, uh, voltage spike. Okay, so hopefully we've done enough of these. Five, you can kind of see the technique. Uh, you def it, it, these questions will always involve two separate events because, you know, mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive means you're dealing with two different things. Um, so define what they are. Uh, find out the probabilities of each of them happening on their own. And uh, then ask yourself, can both of these things happen at the same time? Now, if they can happen at the same time, um, in order for the question to work, you will obviously have to be given that probability. You can't come up with it by yourself. So you notice every question we've had that's non-mutually exclusive, they've told us the probability that, or at least the numbers needed to calculate the probability of both of those things happening. So, um, and that's usually a clue. If you're not sure whether they can both happen at the same time, look in the question to see if they provided that information. Uh, that basically backs up that they can and do happen together. Okay, so that's it for the uh, lesson five. Uh, so this is the end of the introduction to probability unit. Um, we will be looking in our next unit at some probability distributions. Okay, so uh, there's some homework questions here. Please practice them. Practice makes you understand it better and uh, usually makes it, uh, usually gets you a higher mark on the test. So please make sure to practice. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you on the next lesson.